Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on Byte of Geek. My name's Simon and I focus on home assistant and smart home technology right here on the channel. So this is the next episode in my Smart Byte series where I take a concept within Home Assistant and basically walk you through the basics of it in a video that lasts about five minutes or so, showing you some of the examples in my Home Assistant installation and hopefully giving you that grounding so that you can either try it yourself and implement it or you know you go off and you do some further reading and build upon those basics to implement that in your smart home. In this video today I'm going to be going through the dashboard cards in Home Assistant. So what are dashboard cards then? Well basically they are what you will spend most of your time using when you're designing and building your dashboards in Home Assistant. By default Home Assistant comes with quite a range of cards however you, know, you can build upon those by installing ones developed by the community. In this video though we're going to focus on the ones that you get after you've installed Home Assistant. Now I've got my Home Assistant playground here where I try out things before putting them into my real smart home setup but as you can see I've got a fairly basic dashboard setup already with some cards for the time, the weather, couple of cards from a car and I've got an example of a community developed card there as well. Now my dashboards are using sections which is now the default layout for dashboards in Home Assistant and I honestly think that for most people starting out this is probably the best option to go for. So on my dashboard I have these plus signs which let me add a new card to that part of the dashboard. When I click on it I'm then showing all the different cards available to me. Now at the top of the list is a suggested card and that is the tile card. Think of this as a card that can display information about a device and its entities in your smart home. That is its simplest functionality however it is way more powerful than that and lets you do an awful lot more. So for example if I pick uh, the sun then I can change the name displayed I can display a picture instead of an icon. I can change the color for the state uh, the state is currently above the horizon in this example so I can hide that if I don't want to show it or I can change it to another value and I can add additional states to what's displayed as well and you know, I can change the overall layout to fit my dashboard. Now you can also configure this uh, tile card to perform action so if I click on the card itself then maybe you know I can have it navigate to another dashboard or maybe if I click on the icon I can do something else you know maybe turn on or off a switch something like that it's a really flexible card that lets you use it however you need to according to what you're placing it on the dashboard. In the latest version of Home Assistant there are some really exciting cards now and they let you build up a layout how you want. The heading card is really useful because it lets your sections areas off but also you can add things like entities so uh, temperatures for example you, know, you can put that in the header and then you can even make that a clickable item as well so maybe you want to see some more details about the temperature. You've got cards such as the area card which has just been completely redesigned with new functionality. You have the alarm panel card which is really handy if you've got uh, into, uh, a smart home uh, integrated alarm system and if you want a simple push button type card then the button card will do that. Useful for things like switches. If you want to use a calendar in Home Assistant then there is a card for that which is great especially when you integrate it with Google. You now have a clock card as well which can display the date as well so it's great if you're thinking about creating dashboards and putting them on a smart tablet and having that mounted on the wall. One card that I'm using more and more nowadays is the conditional card which lets you do some really clever stuff. So basically you can specify the conditions that must be met uh, so I'm just using the sunrise and sunset values here and you can have a card appear here only when those conditions are met. I use this on my dashboard to only show uh, switches for example when they're only really needed at certain times in the year. 
If you want to just list out a bunch of entities so that you have all your temperatures in your house, for example, then you can do that with the entities card. And likewise, for a single item, then you can just use the entity card. And if you only wanted to show entities that maybe were in a certain state, maybe all of your light bulbs that are switched on, then there is the entity filter card that will let you do that as well. If you find that you need this information in a more compact view, then the glances card will help you here and you can combine that with the entity filter card, enabling you to get a really useful and compact layout. The light card lets you add controls for light bulbs and these look great on a tablet layout to make it easy for people to control the lighting in your home. And if you want to put instructions on your dashboard on how to use things, then the markdown card will let you stylize your text uh, just using some simple tags. It's really uh, you know, simple and easy stuff to do. If you've got smart speakers or sound systems integrated with Home Assistant, then the Media Player card lets you add controls for that device to your dashboard. Everything from simple stop and play controls to displaying the playing track and the artist as well. There are lots of other cards available according to your needs, and it's really worth having a play around with them before you start building out your dashboards. Remember, each card has a help icon in the top corner that will take you to the Home Assistant documentation about that card, where you can find full details of what that card is capable of. Now, when you've added your card to the dashboard, you can then configure how it appears. So you can specify conditions for that card and you can also define the layout for it. Maybe you want the card to take up the full width of the column that you've placed it in on your dashboard or change its height where well, you can do all of that here. And if you need things to be a little bit more precise, then just toggle the precise option and you can make smaller adjustments to the overall size. But if I just show you some of the dashboards from my live system, you'll see I'm using various cards across all of my different dashboards, basically depending upon the needs of the room and the devices available. But how you set yours up is obviously entirely up to you. Hopefully you found this video useful, but what cards are you planning on using on your Home Assistant dashboards? Let me know down below in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you're following along in this series, then don't forget to hit the notification bell as well so that you get informed when the next video comes out in the series. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.